What's up everybody, my name is Josh and I am so excited to be back this week with you guys. And honestly, I'm more excited than I was last week because I heard awesome reviews um, when it came to groups last week. From what I heard, you guys had a blast. I know your leaders worked really, really hard to create a great night of small groups, whether that was at a home or at Oak Bridge. So how about you look at your leaders and just tell them that you love them. So right now, just look right at your leaders and say, I love you. Some of you still aren't listening. Look at your leaders and say, I love you. And maybe you're like, this is my first time here. I don't love them. That's a good point. But we are excited that you're here either way for part three of our series titled From This Day Forward, and then kind of like a subtitle, which I think like has a good ring to it, titled Navigating Sex and Dating God's Way. Week one, we talked about sex. It's probably the only time you're ever going to hear me, a pastor or, or anybody in church for that matter, saying, let's talk about sex, baby. But we did. We talked about sex. Then last week, we talked about singleness and how singleness is a gift. And, and, and some of you might have been annoyed, right? Because you're like, I thought it was about sex and dating. Like, I brought my bae to, to, to hear about dating, right? Like, I wanted to talk about that. Well, you're in, you're, you're, you're in for a treat, like, like you're here, you came the right week because we are talking about dating this week. Let's chat about dating because here's what I know, okay? Y'all are going to date. Y'all are going to date. Whether you're in middle school or high school, like girls, you're going to have, you know, some boyfriends before you graduate, most likely. Guys, you're going to have some girlfriends before you graduate, most likely. As much as I wish I could get up here, and I do wish this, by the way, I wish I could get up here and just be like, don't date, don't date until you graduate high school and then say quick prayer and, and, and just close down. Say amen, right? Everybody parts ways. That's the sermon for this week. Just don't date until you graduate high school. But that wouldn't work, okay? Because it didn't work for me. Like, I, I dated. I'm guessing that a lot of you will as well. But, but before we talk about kind of some of the main, you know, aspects of dating, I want to say this. Like, you don't have to date. You don't have to date. You can if you want to, like it's a free country, unless your parents tell you you can't until a certain age, respect them, honor your parents. But, but, but you don't have to date. The pressure's off. You can have an amazing middle school and high school experience while you're single. It's, it, it's, it's true. Like Jesus is enough. His grace is sufficient for you. But even beyond the spiritual side of things, like you can just have a lot of fun in middle school and high school without worrying about a boyfriend or girlfriend. It's true. Kind of what we talked about last week, like dating, is great if you do it right, but it's also distracting. And so you can like, you know, there'll just be so much more room for activities, you know, like if you're single. So again, you don't have to date, but a lot of you will. So let's ask the first question right here. What's the point of dating? What's the point? In other words, why? Like, like what is the point of dating? What is the what? of dating, which leads really to the first point. There has to be a purpose. There has to be a point. There has to be kind of a reason as to why you're dating. Like if I asked you middle school or high school, why are you dating? You should be able to answer that question. You should be able to answer what is the purpose of this relationship. But a lot of times it's like, eh, I don't know. Thought it would be fun. You know, he's hot, she's a babe. We'll just kind of see where it goes. But that answer doesn't suffice, and here's why. The wisest person to ever live other than Jesus writes this in Proverbs 29 to 18. Without vision, the people perish. In other words, without understanding God's design for even things such as dating... Like, without vision, without a purpose, without a plan, disaster is on the way. So what's the point? I think for a lot of us, it's just a status thing. Can I just get real here for a minute? Like, if Facebook's still a thing, I don't know if it's still relevant. I don't even know. I said Bay earlier. I don't know if that's still a thing either. But, 
Like if Facebook's still a thing, you know, for high schoolers, you want to be able to put in a relationship. On Instagram, you want to be able to post a couple pics and, you know, maybe put on your Instagram bio the person's name and the date that you started dating them with, you know, a nice little heart by them. Like all these, you know, all these different things ah, gag me again, right? But, but, but let me just say this. Dating is not a status to sit in. It is a process to move through. Dating is not a status to sit in. It is a process to move through. The, the purpose of dating is to be a process and it's to be a process of evaluation. While scripture doesn't talk much about dating because dating really wasn't a thing back in those times, but while it doesn't talk a whole lot about dating, it talks a lot about evaluation. Dudes, look at this passage. Again, Solomon writes this, the wisest man to ever live other than Jesus says this, better to live on the corner of a roof then share a house with a quarrelsome wife. Proverbs 25, 24. Friends, do you think that's written to a married man? You know, just some dude living on the corner of a roof, you know, finally reads this and thinks, now you tell me. No, this is written to a single guy who is to evaluate the type of person that he should spend the rest of his life with. Like, is she angry? Is she quarrelsome? Does she start arguments? Is she trying to pick fights? Is she, is she, is she, you know, like, is she tough to be around? Is she not a joy to be around? Like, don't marry someone like that, Solomon says. And then, ladies, look at this. Look at what he writes a few verses later. A man without self-control is like a city broken into and left without walls. Do you think this is for the married girl who's already married to someone that has no self-control and has these random bursts of anger and she's like, well, too late. No, it's written to a single girl saying, hey, is that guy that you think, you know, is real cute, you know, like you kind of like him, is he mean? Does he have random outbursts of anger? Can he not control himself? Because if he doesn't, if he doesn't control himself, if he doesn't have any self-control, like like your, ha your house isn't going to be built up one day. It's going to be destroyed. Don't get involved with someone like that. Evaluation is huge. The reason you date is to evaluate, but what are you evaluating for? And this is, this is, where, this, <laughs> this is where this conversation always gets funny, okay? Because here's what I think the process of evaluation essentially is. Like this is the overarching question that you should be asking yourself is, can I marry this person? Should I marry this person? And like seventh graders, you're probably not like asking that question when it comes to dating. Like you're probably not saying, could I spend the rest of my life with this person? And if you are 13 year old, slow down slugger, right? Like high schooler, are you asking that question? Should I marry this person? Maybe, but most of the time, no. It's just an aimless status to sit in. You don't really know what the purpose is. And when that's the case, dating leads to a whole lot of pain. So the why of dating, the what of dating is it is a process of evaluation which should lead to the next question, who should I date? If dating is to be a process of evaluation, the who question is probably the most important question of all. And most of the time, the answer to that, when it's like, who should you date? Like dudes, what we'll say is like, well, she's gotta be hot. Or, you know, girls, you would say, he's gotta be hot. Or you might throw in words like, they gotta be funny and nice and charming, whatever it would be be, but that's not enough. That's not enough if you're wanting to follow Jesus. Look at this. If you're wanting to follow Jesus in your dating, you have to date someone who follows Jesus. That should be obvious. In fact, for many of you, it is, but for some of us, it's not. Like, Honestly, at some point, if you're single right now and if you're wanting to follow Jesus, you know that. That's just a prerequisite. They have to love Jesus. They have to follow Jesus. But then someone comes along who doesn't. And they're cute. And they show interest. And they like you. And, and you're, like, you're like, well, you know. So what seemed to be obvious in the past is now it's blurry and it's gray. And you're like, well, maybe I could date that person. And before you know it, you're dating someone who, who like for you, the most important thing about you should be your relationship with Jesus. They don't even have that in common 
with you. And then hear this, this happens every single time. When you date someone who doesn't love Jesus, your relationship with Jesus always takes a hit. It always takes a hit every single time. You're influenced by them. This is gonna be the person that you probably hang out with more than anybody and talk to more than anybody in your world. They're gonna influence you. Like pretty soon you, you compromise values and morals and, and sexual boundaries and these types of things because you're being impacted. You're being influenced by someone who doesn't follow Jesus. So you gotta make sure they love God. But beyond that, I'm going to give you two words, two words to think about when you're thinking on who you should date. And the first one is this chemistry, chemistry. Like you need to click. You do. Don't date someone because it's just the first person that's shown interest. Don't even, let me just be clear. Just because they love Jesus doesn't mean that you guys should like date, right? I mean, that's, that's, that's at least a, a good thought. Like make sure it, clicks. Make sure there's some chemistry. Make sure you're attracted to them. Make sure that you guys have fun together. Make sure that it doesn't feel forced. Chemistry. But the problem is a lot of times we stop there. We stop there and you're like, oh, this feels so good. This is so fun. Like everything's so natural with them. This is amazing. They're so cute. They're so funny. Nobody has ever loved like we have loved before. And so chemistry takes over but guys, much more important than chemistry is character. Character. Do not stop at chemistry because you could have chemistry with just about anybody, right? Like you might have chemistry with someone that you should have no business dating. And so the most important question is character. Who is this person? How do they treat people? How do they treat me? How would my life be if I spent the rest of my life with this person? Do they love God? What do they think about when they think about God? You know, is their life different than the average person? Is this God's best for me? That's such a huge question to ask. I remember there was this girl in high school. She was a senior, I was a junior, and I thought she was like really pretty cute. And we had like fun, we had some fun conversations. And, and I remember like there was kind of some chemistry there and I would get all excited when I thought about her, this and that. It was like, you know, and, and I remember like, after a while, there were a couple times she was like kind of a partier. She she came she would come over to my house at like super late at night and she would say, come out to my car, okay? Come out to my car. And I would be like, no, it's late, I'm in bed. And she's like, I'm gonna start honking. I'm gonna start honking, wake your whole neighborhood up if you don't come out. So there were like three different times I would go out to her car. We never kissed or anything, promise. And we would just have conversations. And I realized pretty quickly, even though this is kind of fun, even though there's some chemistry, I don't know where her character is. I don't know if it lines up. And I know that's a goofy example, but you you should know right away. Like, is this God's best for me? And then now the last, the last thing that I want to say about dating is this. Some of you are like, well, what if God's best never comes along? Some of you date later on in high school. Some of you date in college. Some of you date in middle school. All this because you're like, I'm just never, gonna, which if you're in middle school, it's kind of dramatic, okay? If you're in high school, it's kind of dramatic too. But, but I understand the sentiment, like God's best. When is that going to come along? And so like, honestly, here's the issue. A lot of times when it comes to dating, we don't trust God. Like we trust that God is big enough to save us from our sins. We trust that God is big enough to bring us to heaven, to rise from the dead, but we don't trust that God is good enough to give us his best for us in regards to dating. And so I just wanna ask, like, like, please, don't be a believer. Don't be a believer that doesn't believe that God cares for you. God cares for every aspect of your life. I'm gonna close with this. Trust that the God who saved you, if you're single, you're older, you gotta wait. You gotta wait for God's best. And I want you to trust that the God who saved you will provide a mate for you, boyfriend or girlfriend, his best for you. So understand, they gotta love Jesus, good chemistry, good character. That's the hope, we love you. Thank you, have an awesome discussion in groups. We'll see you next time.